I always wonder if you guys question whether those two guys in the pictures behind me are dead or, or whatnot. I mean, this is probably the weirdest setup for a YouTuber. Pool table, some paper stars on the wall, Lenin with a martini logo, a zebra hat, a zebra cowboy hat, dartboard, and two pictures just with some duct tape on the wall. It's weird, it's weird. But hey, stay for the fun. Careful with the wire. Hello everyone, welcome to Random Espoco, and I'm the Russian guy. And today I'm gonna to talk about slings and sling attachment points. There are many videos about slings, many. In fact, I got uh, kind of the vibe to doing this video uh, because yesterday I was watching uh, one of Ronin's videos about carbine setups and uh, he talked for around 50% of the video about the slings. And he made a really good point saying that the sling for the long gun is just like the holster for the pistol. And that's one of the biggest and simplest pieces of wisdom that you can get regarding all this stuff around slings. So you get a gun, right? You get your first airsoft gun. Let's say you get a 416, like this one over here. And you're thinking about, well, I'm gonna put a red dot on, I'm gonna put this grip on, this one looks like a big black dick. I'm gonna put a pack on, even though I don't have night vision. Mine is just a dummy battery box, just for just for the looks of it. Just because, well, for, for secret squirrel reasons. Um, but how many of the new players think about the sling? Now, how much does the gun cost? Let's say 100 euros. Let's, let's go on the cheap side. Say it falls. Let's say you have no optic, just the gun. 100 euros that you just lost. Because it will probably break. Or at least you break something, you have to find the replacement till it ships, when it's external, so it gets harder. You either have to break your mind on how to mount them or give it to someone who knows and pay him. So you end up spending a lot of money on fixing that gun. And most of the time you can prevent it by having a sling, but not just a sling, because if you don't choose the proper sling or you don't attach it properly, you won't be using it right. So you'll end up tired and you end up just having it laying around somewhere and still playing without a sling. Also, if not used properly, you can actually damage the gun by improper handling with that sling, and that's not a good deal either. So I started the video in Spanish just going over historically about how we started with two-point slings, then three-point slings came out, then the single-point slings started popping up, and then we came back to the two-point slings with some things that we learned from the single point and the three-point slings. But I'm gonna begin telling you about the attachment points because there are many videos about slings and slings are a very important piece of all these tactical training videos and, and you have all the brands promoting their slings, saying it's the best and whatnot. But we always overlook the, the sling attachment points. Something, sometimes we take it for granted, uh, sometimes it's because, well, you'll have uh, most military and law enforcement having their slings issued. Some kind of sling will be issued, usually a two point, or well, depending in time, depending on the unit, depending on, on the country and all that. Uh, so they, they kind of will learn the way around the sling when it comes to a point when you're getting another sling for yourself. But in Airsoft, you buy everything. So most of the time you won't have nothing issued so you won't have uh, a point where to start especially airsoft has s some differences regarding slings to the real military world however i'd say that from all the things that you can have for airsoft the rifle sling is the one that's more similar in the use with the real firearm world so i counted six different sling attachment points going from tip to butt, like Mike from Grand Thumble say the Navy likes. Just some, some of these things are, are gold. I hope you can see this well. 
Number one will be uh, on the front side, on the gas block. Uh, this will be usually like on the M16. It will be really far away up front. Um, mostly ARs will have it uh, traditionally attached uh, under the front side or the where the gas mechanism is. Then you have point number two at the end of the handguard. In case you go with the AK, this will be the attachment point since both the front side and the gas uh, tube are further up front. So it won't go here, it won't go here, it will go here at the end of the handguard, which, well, it, it always depends on the gun, but it will matter when we come to the Weapon, hand, weapon handling itself. Then you have number three, which will be around where you would have your vertical grip on, or angle grip, or wherever the point of gripping the gun is with the reaction hand. Did I just say reaction hand? Your off hand, your bad hand, reaction hand, whatever. For me, is my right hand, since I'm, since I'm left-handed, for most of you will be the left hand uh, and I'll come on why I consider this a specific attachment point. Then you have point number four which is somewhere between the handguard and the body near the magwell, somewhere really in the middle of the gun, somewhere close to the center of the weight of the gun. Then you'll have point number five which is between the buttstock and the receiver and you have number six, which will be at the end, at the rear end of the buttstock. So, in the case of the M16A1, for example, like most uh, standard issued military assault rifles and just battle rifles and carbines and whatnot from the 20th century, you'll have uh, attachment point number one and attachment point number six, made specifically for the two-point sling in a way that it goes on the upper side of the gun, so it can be transported over the shoulder, uh, just as a transport um, uh, thingy, not in a tactical environment, like we'll see coming up over history. Then you'll see uh, Scar H's and, and all modern rifles will usually have a combination, and different Sling attachment points, you will find number six, number five. You will have, of course, uh, number one and number two at the same time at the end of this hangar and on the gas system. Uh, just like, but this, is, this will be the number one, but it's also number two, so sometimes they'll be the same, sometimes, you know. Number three will be around here. If I put, if I put this uh, railed swing swivel on here or on here, depending on the side, that will be number three, so I can have it on the thumb, which is something that happens on the AK. If I'm not using any type of vertical or angle foregrip, I'll have uh, number two and number three at the same position. So I'll be shooting like this, and when you're shooting thumb over bar or C clamp or whatever, you'll have the thumb really close, and you can reach the end of that sling, so you can operate it, so you can easily find it and see where it goes. And also, when you're just using the sling, when you put it over your head, for example, you can just go up front and you find that hand and you find that gripping point, so that's a good point of reference, especially if you're not using any type of foregrip or angle foregrip or whatever. Um, so that will be number three. And number four will be something like I have on the Scar H between the magwell and the gripping zone, as well as I have on the 416, which is just a paracord piece, just a paracord knotted around. So it's between the gripping zone, between the magwell, brings the uh, sling closer to the other point. Now, if I had another whiteboard that won't be just with cocks driven all over it, I'll have a little, I'll have a little graphic where you will see that the distance between the sling attachment points it's directly related to the maneuverability and the retention. So the closer this uh, 
sling attachment points are, the more maneuverable the gun will be, the more easy to use with the sling it will be. But the longer uh, they're, they're apart from each other, the more retention, and generally it's closer to your body, so it's easier to use when, for example, climbing over a wall or whatever. If you take the single point sling, which is zero between one and another, because it's just one point, and you always put it on the fifth position, number five, which will be over here. Wait. So it's pretty maneuverable. Normal, switching about, just have it over here. You can just run it through here. You can run it through there, but then it dangles, it moves around. It's like having a big chungus between your legs. Well, it's having a big chungus between your legs. And this is a 10 inch, a, a, a 10 inch, a 10 inch barreled AR. So it's quite the short, on, on the short end of what rifles are. Uh, the shorter the gun is overall, especially regarding the barrel. Let's take the submachine gun, for example, MP9. The more friendly it will be for single point slings. The longer the gun is, less friendly. So that's why you see that these guns, you don't usually see a full length M16 with a single point sling. However, you can do this just with some paracord, making a loop that goes through the carrying handle and over this piece over here and you just attach your sling whatever you want and there you have it it's just one single point sling paracord is your friend not just to making up your own single uh, not to making your sling attachment points like this one over here it can also help you adapt uh, the ones that the gun already has two different types of slings. For example, the MP9 has just one little tiny, teeny, tiny hole and you can buy an adapter. But why when you can make your own just with a little piece of paracord, just going around. It's not even a loop, it's just there forever. And now I can attach everything that I basically want and usually it will be silent because paracord is silent. That's great. So I also have one paracord loop on the fifth point of the fifth point I'm having trouble pronunciation today, of this car H, uh, just for the same reason, but this one is a loop, I can take it on and off, if I want to just go, maybe transition to the other side, nonsense for me, but whatever, um, also attached with no metal clingy thing, so it's silent, on the front I could have attached one, but the nylon of this sling is soft enough to just go go over it with no tr with no trouble on the AK I have two paracord loops one to make the front sling attachment point left-handed just going through the barrel and the gas block over here and on the back and this is highly recommended for right-handed users that want to use any type of sling on their side photos or under photo AK another loop uh, I use it even though I'm left-handed because the other slings that I use that have not a proper thick with three C's sling attachment point like this which is just a sling of just as on most of the others uh, but if you're using something thinner like the one here a metal thingy uh, it will sometimes make the pressure the wrong way and it will fall off so really recommending the paracord loops you can get i usually link it from amazon if you want to buy it for the european union but amazon on anywhere in the world you can find paracord pretty cheap like 10 euros for a lot of paracord i bought this like three years ago still using it cheap and uh, you can make i mean imagination is your limit basically so we went over the attachment points let's go over the slings now so we start out with the classical two-point slings the biggest difference between the classic two-point slings and the modern two-point slings is that the classic are just a piece of nylon or even leather they are adjustable but they're not quickly adjustable so you just have it in one length and that's it you adjust it to your body 
to your preference, to the use you, 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 you're going to give it, but you, you're running it in just one adjustment. The one I have is the classical AK sling, which is probably one of the best classic slings that you can find because they're cheap as fuck. You have all over Eastern Europe, they've been copied and made, so you don't really care where it, where it comes from. Uh, you also have Chinese ones, like from D-Boys and Sima and whatnot, but just, they're so cheap. You can find them on eBay, you can find them on Taiwan Gun, and you can find them on Grey Shop. And it's one of those things that you can buy from Grey Shop because it's not that much of a price and it's the easiest choice, but I won't recommend you buying from Grey Shop because they are scammers in the criminal type of way because they sold uh, one type of uniform, saying it was another type of uniform, and that's a scam. That's illegal, at least here in Spain. So I don't recommend Grey Shop, but if you can't find it anywhere else at an affordable price, it's your money, do whatever you want. Now, um, the problem with them was is that usually they'll attach to the six and one points or the five and one or the two and six or the two and five. In the AK is the, the five. So you won't have many maneuverability, but good retention. So without the proper training on how to uh, use it in different positions and all the different transitions you can do. And for that matter, you can check out Sonny Puzikas, um, who was in some special unit back in the Soviet Union, went to the US, started his own martial arts school with Sistema. Then uh, he did some tactical training for AKs and he kind of st sticks to the basic stuff you get with an AK, like he's the caveman tactical AK edition. So it's a good place to start. And it was, he was one of the first that you can actually find on YouTube that opened some of his content to, um, to the public. Uh, it was back when they sold DVDs with tactical training, not like these days. So yeah, I, I think I, I first watched some of his stuff like 12 years ago, like it, it was a long time ago. But he, he does some awesome transitions. I have a video on Instagram just doing most of the stuff that he does. Um, I won't show it here because shoulder injuries and ceiling and whatever and full kit, it's kind of, um, difficult to do plus yeah, I have the microphone I tried to do it in the Spanish version almost hurt my shoulder not a good idea so the problem was that yeah uh, they're simple they're cheap but um, people needed to use those slings in uh, closed environments which is why at the end of the 90s beginning of the 2000s we would see a lot of mp5s with three-point slings uh, three-point sling basically makes a one-point sling that's attached to the one or two and five and six attachment points. So instead of adding attachment points to our guns, which before we had all the rails and all the systems and all the aftermarket parts was kind of a uh, difficult, they just made a sling that made those attachment points. So you would have because I, I used to have two point slings, one I sold and the other one I can't find. In other case, I'd show you. You'd have the sling come in here and here. You'll have some of the sling webbing coming all over through the length of the gun. And then you'll have the part that goes to your body from around here and ar around here. So you basically have in the middle the fifth position, which means that you get better retention than with a single point sling, um, but almost the same maneuverability as with that uh, single point sling. Then they made it so you can choose where does this point, this third point start from, so you could almost take it to the end, which made uh, the sling closer to the body, so you can easily transition from retention to maneuverability, but they had one big issue that was you still have additional webbing, additional 
piece of nylon, at least 25 millimeters, will be just like having another sling going through the whole body of the rifle. And that's really uncomfortable when you're reloading because you have that piece of webbing in the middle when you're taking one mag out and you just, you know, when you're doing a super tactical operator reload and that stuff. So, and, and they were a bit cumbersome in a way that, you know, too, too many things, too many components, but you can still find a lot of older videos about three point slings. I made one on Sp in Spanish on the channel a couple of years back from when I was using them. And yeah, they, they, they are good. You, you can use them, but still missing something. So then we have the single point slings, like the one I have here, the one I showed you. It has to go always on the fifth attachment point. And I always see newer guys that maybe have a standard M4 and they do this and this happens. Does this look practical? Does this look like a solution to you? No, it's not. If you don't have that fifth attachment point between the buttstock and the receiver, there is no point in using a single point sling. However, as I said, you can make one just with paracord and most modern day airsoft guns come with one, even though the real life counterpart won't have one. You have the ASAP um, mounting point on the VFCs. You can get this aftermarket, easy to install. You just remove the buttstock and just put it on, remove the tube. So, well, not that many tools needed, still easier on the AK because, well, you know, AK is superior to ARs at least in airsoft, in every way, <laughs> as i shown before. Um, but yeah, they're good for new players or those players who don't really move that much in a way that it's really easy to begin using a single point sling. It's, it's one of those things that you put on and forget. In fact, I'm not even noticing that I have the sling once I have the, the gun off. Uh, I recommend using Ah, well, that's, that's one important thing. Never buy a single point sling because a two point sling, it's a single point sling if you just attach it to a single point. Mind blown. You have some slings like, like the Magpul MS slings. This is the MS2, it's not original Magpul. This is a copy from Russian manufacturer Splav. Uh, extremely cheap, it was like eight euros. Um, great quality, by the way, good build used it for a couple of years now. Not as much as the standard sling, of course. And what it is, is basically a convertible sling. So it's made to be a, a one point sling to be convertible, but all two point slings. And in fact, you, you can see a lot of reference pictures of Russian units running the standard AK sling as a single point sling. So it's very doable, it's very doable and um, more practical because maybe you're beginning in airsoft, you get one of these. FMA makes the copies for five euros. All that you need to do to them, basically to be a little bit more trustworthy, is to add some electrical tape or duct tape on this end where you can just, when the sling can, uh, the nylon can slide off the ring and it will fall. Also some of the clips are not as good as this one, but you get the results basically. So if it's not a really expensive and heavy uh, replica, maybe a shotgun, uh, you can go with one of those five euro slings, but spend at least 10% of the cost of the gun and the accessories you're mounting on. Well, maybe not at least, but think of it as the insurance policy of that gun. Because if you fall to the ground, well, if the gun breaks, you fell to the ground, but if just the gun fails because your cheap ass sling failed and it breaks, that's just stupid. So invest in a good sling. You also have one of the cheapest, and this is a modern two point, the Helicon Tex, not my favorite, but amazing quality for the price. The, the thing that I don't like about this sling, the only thing I don't like is that padding is way too hard. So I have this other one from TMC, which is also cheap, but it's, it's decently made, not the best, but still not the worst. Um, it's decent, but 
it's much softer the padding and, and everything so sometimes this one will just fuck up your neck and the whole purpose of having a padded sling is not to fuck up your neck and the back and this is okay but for a heavy gun maybe not the best but still for the price it's amazing and they're just they're made in black and in coyote but you can always spray paint them i run either motocam or green usually but when i get tired of it i'll just spray paint it so paracord is your friend spend money on slings and then we go to the last one back to the two point slings but now they've been revisited so what's the biggest difference between a modern two point sling and a classic two point sling well it's as simple as this you can change the adjustment you can change the length quickly and easily from the user's position from the shooter standpoint by using certain integrated mechanisms that as you can see sometimes fail if this thing is fucking chinese and they don't have good components on them so basically this is the longest that i can use mine right now the best attachment points for it are number six on the back and number four or number three on the front even number two sometimes i have it on five and three sorry, five and four, which is almost like a single point, not quite. If I'd run it on six and uh, four, it will be better, but I, I'll get a wobbly buttstock because plastic. So I have it on six, so I have it on five, sorry. Uh, the biggest advantage on having that back uh, sling mount on the six is that it's closer to your shoulder that way you have better retention and yet you're able to shoot with your good hand and just throw it on and it gets here but in this case i have it this is the longest so i can transition without changing the sling uh, around my body but i can also go like this and like this and i can change to the other side then go back here pee -pee -pee -pee, and all the stuff but when i throw it back when I throw it, uh, gets quite low, so that way if I'm walking, if I'm waiting, whatever, I'll shorten it, that way it gets here. As you can see, difference between the single point and the two point in this configuration is that it's inclined, so if I'm running on the open, I can run, walk, whatever, it won't get in the way, but if I'm entering a room with a pistol, which is something most airsofters do because of rules, you just bring that to the center you use your own elbow to bring that gun to the center while aiming the pistol and that way you can walk you it's between your knees so you can walk in but you won't hit the doorways with the barrel or with the stock if you throw it that way vertically so yeah uh, at the end of the day it depends on the gun you have the whole gear setup that you're using the type of games you go to and the type of gameplay that you have. So if you are more aggressive, if you just, you're breaching all the buildings, you're clearing all the rooms, you're gonna go for a shorter gun maybe, so it won't get in the way. Now, some machine guns, for example, are great for single point, but I have friends that run the Tokimarui MP7 gas blowback with a two point sling. That way also when they throw it, it gets, in this position instead of this position so it's closer to the body especially if you're running a suppressor or whatever sides when it begins to get heavy and longer that retention those attachment points play a bigger deal but just single point can be very good for submachine guns for shorter rifles um, <clears throat> and it's easier to use it's easier to overall you can just forget about the sling also two point slings you you don't just run them a single uh, way you don't just put them around the offhand shoulder and the neck you can see as i did i put it only around the neck 
you can still throw the gun down and I, when I usually run this sling with the AK I would rarely use it like this most of it because it's a number two and a number five so I have that stock in between so I cannot aim properly I have the chicken wing but if I do this it's easy and if I want to and if I want to switch the shoulder I just run it over my head but then if I want to jump over something I run it over the other shoulder and I'll block it with a pistol so that way it won't go up front it will stay there so I can jump over and it will go with my leg if I'm going full Rambo I'm not <laughs> you can do it this way but nonsense you just you get used to it you get practicing you get used to it and depending on how your country is on the whole COVID situation right now you may not see an airsoft field in a while so this is just another excuse to get the guns out to get the slings to get the gear put everything on practice a little bit see if that swing uh, that sling setup uh, suits you your gear, your gun, the way you play, etc. And you can really have some good time adjusting all of this and you can see the results back when you're playing. So it's investing some of the time in the hobby without playing. I think it could be good for everyone. And as always, I want to see what you guys did. I want to see your sling setups. I want to see maybe your creative ways of doing this stuff because it may help others to maybe you have the same gun as another guy, but he no, don't, doesn't really know how to make the proper sling attachment points uh, maybe with paracord maybe you know serve as an inspiration so you can post pictures in the comments on youtube unfortunately but you can uh, put up a story on instagram tag me on russo down slash crudo is it down down slash low slash you know the, the one that goes in there I, i'll link my, my instagram of course as usual on the video description and you can just upload a story and I'll repost it and we'll see what everyone has. Let's see what, what, where this goes to. And maybe even if, if you send me enough of these, of course, I said the same in a video in Spanish. So you'll be seeing mostly uh, stuff from the guys from Spain. Uh, I may even make a highlight stories like so they can be stored there, maybe add some later so you can find your inspiration there. And that's the proper use of the word inspiration, not the inspired kids that we see. So, hey, I hope this was useful. I hope this was entertaining. As always, the comment section is for you to just say whatever you want. And that's basically it. If you think that maybe a group, maybe a WhatsApp group with your friends, with your teammates may find this entertaining or instructing, please send it there post it on a Facebook group or whatever, that way it gets more visibility. It can either help other people or other people can help us. They can correct me, give me better information. That way I can make better videos and it's best for everyone. Thank you very much for watching. That's it. Hasta luego. I fucking love the Safari Land holsters. I mean, best holsters ever. For me at least.